Hey guys, it's the end of 2022, but before we go out, I wanted to give my list of my top best movies of 2022. Now this list actually was a little bit harder to put together than the worst. When you see that video, you'll understand why. There was a lot of good-ish movies this year, but there was only a couple that really stood out. Like the top three, I know for sure are the top three. The rest I was kind of like going up and down, back and forth with, so this might not even stay like set certain for myself maybe in later years, but for the time being, these are what I thought were the best movies of the year. But before we get to my top seven, I'm gonna do some honorable mentions. There was a lot of really actually decent horror this year, one of those being the X and Pearl movies. These are the first movies that Ty West have made that I actually think are pretty decent. This is a director who's gotten better over time because he started out making doo-doo and now he's made pretty decent. I actually liked Pearl a little bit more than X. I can see X is a better movie than Pearl, but thought they were okay. Elvis. Honestly, this movie's story is not as in-depth about the characters I thought, but Austin Butler's performance nearly put this on my list for top seven because he's absolutely phenomenal. Have your thoughts whatever about the director, but by God, did he get that idea of what made Elvis so popular, that craze, that insanity. It brought it in this movie. I really enjoyed Prey. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really fun. I liked how it ended, but I never re-watched it again. And I kind of didn't really have a need. I just thought, you know what? That's a really good movie. And I found that all of the distaste about the film was a little bit like sour, but I don't know. I thought it was a good movie. It's the same movie again. <laughs> But it was really well done in terms of not only the storytelling, but also this, the visual elements, the world building, all that. It's better than the first movie, in my opinion. And that's hard for me to say because I love Stephen Lang's character in the first movie. And finally, the unbearable weight of massive talent. I actually really enjoyed the first two thirds of this film. I thought that the whole meta jokes with Nicolas Cage were fantastic. His chemistry with Pedro Pascal was wonderful, but the last third of the movie was garbage, which admittedly kind of tied into what the film was doing, but I didn't feel it worked for me, but that's why it's an honorable mention and not on the list. So now we're on the actual list. So starting with number seven, Barbarian. I watched this near the end of the year and holy shit did this thing have me on the edge of my seat throughout. I think I watched about the first 30 minutes of it on my computer and then I'm like, nope, I gotta watch this on the TV. I sat down and rewatched it with my wife and we were hooked the whole way through. This has a lot of great twists. There's a lot of good moments where you're like, well, isn't this gonna happen? And then the film basically answers that and then goes in a different direction, constantly subverting your expectations in a good way. Maybe it has a little bit of a convenient cheesy ending, but I still enjoyed this throughout and the fact that this was made by one of the guys from the Whitest Guys You Know sketches just it, phenomenal. Banshees of Insurance. Now there's a few people who might be a little bit upset that I put this on this list, but I've really been rethinking about this movie for the last little while. And it is such a great message about the stubbornness of man and the lengths he will go to to prove his point, to say that he is right, despite the fact that there is self-harm involved, that there is self-loss involved. And it's all about these guys is arguing on this island that has no matter to anyone, even in the grand scheme of things, but they think that they are the center of the universe. And it's a great idea about Folly of Man. Brendan Gleeson and uh, Colin Farrell do fantastic performances in this movie. And it's a lot of funny humor in it, despite it being very dark. The Northman. Now this was another one that I was kind of going back and forth on. Uh, to quote Jeremy Johns, the most digestible Robert uh, Eggers movie that he's ever made. If you were to put this next to The Witch and The Lighthouse especially, they are definitely much weirder than this movie was. This film has a very straightforward story but it really delves into that North mythology not only with the hierarchy of Viking culture but also the gods Valhalla, the spirit and the deities of that uh, of that way of life, and all of those visual elements are just so good in this movie. Beautiful landscape shot in Iceland, and then there's a fucking volcano fight at the end. So yeah, it had a very good visual prowess, a very good world building prowess. Story was a bit basic, but everything else made up for that. 
all quiet on the Western Front. Can't make a list like this without having one of the most depressingly good movies I've seen this year. All Quiet on the Western Front is probably one of the most realistic World War I movies, hell, even World War movies I've ever seen. Not only did it have very good cinematography, like, they knew they couldn't do what Roger Deakins did in 1917, but by God did they try. Brutality throughout the entire film, fantastic production design, just captured that absolute hopeless bleakness and depressing nature that was the First World War, especially for the German side. And yeah, it, it, it's just a really fucking depressing movie, but it's such a well-made depressing movie. If you haven't seen it, I definitely, definitely would recommend watching it. Okay, so now we're into the top three. These are the ones that I knew their places for right off the bat. The Batman. While the Dark Knight films that Christopher Nolan made were good movies that had Batman in them, The Batman is a good movie about Batman. Matt Reeves gives probably the most accurate, comic accurate character to depiction of the Batman since we got this character on the screen. His detective work, his obsession, his mentality of how he approaches himself as the Batman. Robert Pattinson's in the suit for like 90% in the movie and I enjoyed those aspects so much. There was a lot of people who were kind of like, well, where's the Bruce Wayne element? And well, that's kind of the idea is like he doesn't want to use the Bruce Wayne element yet. This is how about him using the Batman as his tool, as his hammer, till the end of the film where he realizes that being this complete mythos of a fear to crime isn't the only way that he's going to save Gotham. He also needs to save the people itself. Also, Paul Dano as the Riddler. Fantastic. Weird as fuck but really, really good. Also like Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. Colin Farrell again, killing it with the Penguin, doing his best Robert De Niro <laughs> impression at times. Really enjoyed this movie. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I did not see this in theaters and I very much regret it, but I did watch it on the flight home back from England and then I came home and watched it again. This is some of the most creative filmmaking I've seen in a while. I loved this story. I love how they put it together. I like how it's kind of a little bit of a play on normal sort of uh, kung fu movies of its style, but there's also at the heart of it a, fi a family story, a family problem. And Michelle Yeoh is just fantastic in this movie. Little short rounds in this too. It's the first time he's been back in filming and like ages. Came back for this movie as Wayman and he was so good in this movie too. The daughter was exceptional and then the visual what the fuckness was so fun. Every bit of this movie just kept you entertained. It kept you going. I still am amazed that this was made on a, like a budget of 10 million or something like that yet you would think that there's so much more. The creativity, the mountain of it just flowing out of the directors and the writers in this film and being displayed on the page and on the screen is insurmountable. I can't describe to you just how creative this movie is, but it's not like something that, you know, like to stick your thumb at or be pretentious or whatnot. It's just a very, very fun, very fun visually, very fun entertainingly, very fun story-wise movie. There's so many elements to it that you just keep finding more and more to them. And it's probably the best story film that came out this year, hands down. It was just so super enjoyable, super fun, and I love how it ended too. It's a very, you know, like I said, a family kind of aspect to it that a lot of people kind of overlook with all the, the wacky hooty 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 that happens in this movie. But yeah, that's why it's number two. Mr. Tom Cruise has my number one pick. I went and saw Top Gun Maverick four times in theaters. I admittedly saw it in different variations, one of them being the DX box where it moved and I swear I turned five years old again when I went to the air shows as a kid and went on those simulator rides. This is the perfect example of a legacy sequel. This is what Hollywood has been trying to do for a while. A lot of films in this last little while that have been bringing these films back from the past are doing it for cash grab or just like the hey, nostalgia bait. Top Gun Maverick is actually a movie at heart. Sure, it follows the Star Wars A New Hope a little bit on the nose, 
but it's such an engaging, fun movie. I was so engaged in this film. I was moving in my seat. The camera work and the lengths that they went to to get these scenes of these actors in these jets doing these maneuvers is something that every film that comes out afterwards is now going to have to work against. Apparently there was a film that was being made in China that was talking about their ace pilots and they pulled it from being made because Top Gun Maverick came out and they made them look like shit. Maverick actually has a bit of a character arc in this film. Sure, it's not as much as most would have in terms of Tom Cruise's, it's just Tom Cruise playing Tom Cruise, but he gets an arc in this film with the son of Goose, Rooster. I thought that him and Miles Teller had great back and forth. John Hamm's a really good asshole in this movie. The scene with Val Kimmer, I swear I could hear people getting teary in the theater. Who the fuck thought that was gonna happen? And then the final climax of the movie, oh my God, I don't think I let a breath out for like half an hour. Peak meaning of what it's like to go to the theater. I think that was one of the reasons why I didn't go to the theater as much this year is because Top Gun Maverick just nailed exactly what I love about going to the movie theater. Using that sound, using that screen, using that situation in that area to make the full amount of what you have. I didn't see it in the, what's it, the DX thing, which is the, the 70, like the 270 degree, because apparently it only worked for a little bit of it. But seeing it in IMAX, seeing it in the D-Box was just fantastic. Absolutely my favorite movie going experience of the year, hands down, goes to Top Gun Maverick. Those are my top seven movies of the year. I'll be releasing the top worst later on today. Tell me what you guys think were your best movies of the year. Do you agree with my list? Do you not? See, let's have a conversation about it. Anyways, guys, thank you again for watching my videos this year. I really appreciate it. I know I wasn't as on the ball with it this year. I do hope to try and do a little bit better next year, but the business really took a big, uh, took a big up this year, which is good. So that did get a little bit in the way, though I do apologize. But, you know, uh, let's see what we have for us next year. Anyways, stay tuned and you'll be seeing the worst list later today. Anyways, it's all from me, guys. Hope you enjoyed your year. Hope you had a good year. And here's to you having a good 2023. Until then, see you guys next time.